Welcome to the video. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you how I organize my Lightroom catalog. Now, I've made a few Lightroom related videos in the past on this channel. If you do wanna go and check them out, please feel free. And one of the most frequently asked questions on those videos is how I organize my Lightroom catalog. I've procrastinated making this video because I've always thought to myself, there's not really too much to my process. I, I keep it as simple as possible so that it doesn't hold me back and hinder my process and sort of take away from my creativity. However, it does keep popping up this question. So I thought I'd break it down into its simple steps and share it with you. So I hope you find this useful and you can maybe implement some of the bits and pieces into your workflow. The whole premise of these, this organization really is to make the process very streamlined, simple, easy to find photos when you want them, easy to share, organize, look things up, and of course, just simplify the whole process so that you enjoy going out there, taking photos and editing them. So without further ado, let's get into it. First things first, everything I'm referring to today relates to Lightroom Mobile or Lightroom CC and not Lightroom Classic. I've previously made a full workflow video of my process within Lightroom. So just as a quick summary and overview, I split it down into four main sections. One is the import, two is the rating and review, three, the almighty editing, and four, finally, is the export. Step number one is importing your image or images. So if you come over into Lightroom here on my iPad, on the bottom right, there's a little plus button, and you can either choose from your device or the card that is connected to the device. In this instance, I'm gonna select connected card camera. It's actually a card that I have plugged into my iPad. All of your media from that device will come up in front of you. If you hit the top three dots on the top right hand corner there, you can select smaller or larger thumbnails so you can see your images a bit clearer. And one really useful thing I find if you shoot in JPEG and RAW is you can select either the JPEGs or the RAWs so that you can easily just select all of them without bringing a duplicate in. So select or deselect as you wish. In this instance, I'm just gonna leave it all selected. So come back to your grid here. You can basically select what images you would like. If you wanna select all from a date range, hit that little square on the top left next to the date. It will select everything from that day. Great when you've been out on a big shoot. Now, here's a really crucial part for organization. At the top, it will say add to all photos by default. This I use when I'm just bringing in one or two singular images that are just kind of day-to-day -day shots that maybe I want to post on my Instagram stories or something like that. However, if it's a specific shoot, I like to be more organized, so I will create or add to an existing album. So in this instance, I'm gonna create a new album and I'm gonna call it a uh, test album, just for the sake of this video. You hit okay. You can then select image, images you want to bring into it. So we'll just select that picture of a table that I took this morning, very exciting. So the image is selected, it's adding to test album and you quite simply press import and hit okay. And you can come out of this import dialogue. Before I get into my organization and structure, step two of the import process is organizing, curating and rating my images so that it reduces that overwhelm for feeling and gets things a little bit more organized and ready for the editing stage. So if you come into this test album here, obviously there's only one image, but imagine there was quite a few. I would literally go through every image and just give it a rating or a flag. Quite often what I like to do if I've taken a lot of images is come in here. You'll see there's a little star icon on the right hand side. You can hit that and then you get the option at the bottom of star rating or a tick or reject. Now I like to go through and do a flag and a tick. I keep this very simple as I say. Most of the time I'll do this. So say I like that image, I hit the tick and I'll literally flick through tick cross, tick cross, tick cross. This will then eliminate all of my images that I really don't want to use. And I can come into another album just to show you, for example, this is a recent shoot I did in Hammersmith. So say I had, you know, rejected quite a few images. Let's just reject quite a few. I'm not actually going to delete these, but what I can do is just like reject loads of them. When I come back to the grid overview, I can hit this little filter button on the top right here and I can select X images. And what I would then do is hold down on one of them select them all and hit the remove button and that will get them out of my out of my sight out of my way i only do that with images that you know out of focus and i'm definitely not going to want to use if i've done a bit of a bigger shoot and there's a bit few more images i might get into star ratings 
to kind of curate them even further. But typically I really just go through a tick and a cross process and then I'll have my ticks remaining and I can get into editing those without having to sift through lots and lots of photos I'm just never going to work with and never going to edit. And once I've rated and rejected everything, all the remaining ticked images, the flagged images that I want to keep, I will get into my edit. In this video, I am not going to go through that, but I do have some plans to make a video of my editing workflow as well, but we'll leave it for the time being because this will end up being a very, very long video. So next up is my structure. How do I structure it? Again, I keep this really, really simple. You can create folders and albums on your left hand side here. So I have a folder for an overarching genre of albums, and then I have albums within them. So this is how I do it. I have an assignments folder, one called HY, which is my personal folder, trips, day trips out in the UK. I have some work albums in another folder. I have a YouTube folder, which has kind of images that I take for this channel, like various products, etc., etc. And that is pretty much it. Underneath that, I do have some loose albums, which are typically my active albums that I'm working on or, or, or currently editing. So I'll just keep them there. And then when I finish with them, I tend to drop them into the relevant folder. This works really nicely for me because it just keeps things a little bit tidier instead of having hundreds and hundreds of albums. You can always create a new album. You don't always have to do that within the import dialog. Next to my albums, you can hit plus here. You can create a folder or an album. And it's quite a nice system, especially uh, on the iPad and things. You can literally pick something up and you can drag it and drop it wherever you wish. So you can hold it down and I will eventually drop that into UK. But for the time it's sitting here, because I'm still editing it. You do have a few options with independent albums. If you hit the little three dots on the right hand side of the album there, you can also store the images locally. Sometimes this is useful when you're traveling and you don't have internet connection. If you are using the cloud-based service within Adobe, I don't have a huge amount of storage on this iPad. So I just keep them up in the cloud and typically they'll be like a smart preview. But if I want the full, uh, the full version on my iPad to edit, I would just hit store locally. Do make sure to uncheck this when you get back home or you're not working on the album because it will eventually take up quite a lot of space but it's a really useful hack especially when traveling i also use share and invite quite a lot because i like to share my images with my friends and my family especially those personal albums so you can hit share and invite here on this album it will then enable a link if you do that you can then come into this little um, dialog box here you can get shareable link so i now have it here you can just copy that and you can share it with anyone if you so wish you can change a few settings in it so you can have anyone can view and then invite only. Link settings that I find useful are allowing JPEG downloads. So if I'm sharing this with friends and family, I'll often enable that and then they can actually download it directly from that link. It takes you to a, to a web link and they can look at the images and then, and then they can download the images as they wish, which is really nice. Um, other than that, you can obviously move your album around. You can drop it into other folders. Um, you can rename it, obviously you can delete it and you can add other images from various other places within your Lightroom catalog. That really is it. That helps me keep super, super organized. I know where everything is, I can find everything and labeling everything correctly at the beginning just enables you to have a nice smooth workflow and I do try and organize these on a fairly regu regular basis and drop them into the according folder. Other than this, in terms of finding things, organizing things, I've touched on it earlier in the video, but that's using that little filter option at the top of the screen here, which is really, really useful. I don't just use it for choosing my rejects and deleting photos, but you can filter by rated images, the type, the camera that was used, which is often useful, um, location, and if you have keyworded, you can, or even edited. Sometimes this is quite useful. You can click edited or not edited. So maybe if you hit not edited, you will then see images obviously that you're yet to edit and you've still got to do. So that filter option I do find really, really useful. It's not as expansive as it is in Lightroom Classic. You definitely get more options. You can select lenses and various other metadata. I do wish you could choose lenses on this one. That would really make it for me and that would really uh, avoid me going into uh, Lightroom Classic, but I can always have my wish list. Just to finish this video out, there's a few little options and settings you can select and tweak within the import settings to make the process a little bit more streamlined. So if you come to the three dots on the top right hand corner here and you press app settings, you then come into import, you'll see a few options here. I personally have the auto add from device 
option completely switched off. I've used it on in the past when I took a lot of images on my phone, but I found it really, really annoying. It's literally just bringing everything from your photos app into Lightroom all of the time. And if you're doing other things, like I'm creating other JPEGs and, and graphics, it's always constantly bring this stuff in. And images that you've downloaded from your WhatsApp, I just find it a nightmare. I prefer to be in control of what I'm importing into Lightroom, so I switch that off. I also have uh, a copyright added here, so you can just switch that on and off, and I've got my little Hannah Young copyright, which is nice because that's baked into the metadata of the image. So just a little tweak. And finally, one setting that I've implemented more recently, as I just discovered it, to be honest with you, is pause sync while importing. I don't have the best Wi-Fi at home, and sometimes my devices get a little overwhelmed by trying to sync and import at the same time. So I will just pause the sync whilst importing my images so that it gives the device a little bit of a rest. You can bring all the images in. Uh, I might, you know, start playing around with them, organizing them a little bit, and then let it sync afterwards. Just uh, calms everything down a bit and gives <laughs> gives my very slow and chuggy internet a little bit of time to catch up. So that pretty much covers it. I've given you a brief oversight into kind of my my organisation there. I hope I covered everything that was needed or that you had questions about or, and I hope you found it useful. If you do have any further questions, I'm sure I've missed bits, so please do drop them down below. I'd be very, very happy to help. Um, I am fine tuning this myself all the time and I'm constantly looking into settings um, and options. They, they get changed and they get added and updated all the time as well. Adobe are very good at that. So thank you for watching. Happy photography. Enjoy your editing and I hope this streamlines it a little bit for you. And I will look forward to seeing you in the next video.